Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape. Transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are aboard a dead ship, drifting aimlessly in the endless reaches of the Indian Ocean, while the three men who are your companions, unaware of your innermost thoughts, are making their own plans for the division of treasure, which, because you are a woman, can mean life or death for you all. Listen now as Escape brings you Larry Roman's unusual story, The Derelict. I'm rich now. Good looking, too. A lot of guys have said so. 29, and that's on the square. Dark eyes, dark hair, and I've been a dancer all my life, so you can figure out for yourself how I'm built. I'm not telling you this out of conceit or anything. I just want you to know what you'd have if you had me. And you can have me, any one of you. All you gotta do is come out and get me. A couple of weeks ago, I climbed aboard the freighter Capricorn out of Singapore for Suez with a load of porcelain and six passengers. I had a job waiting for me in Cairo, but I took a ship instead of a plane. One for the dough. Two, because I was in no hurry to start working. The honest truth was my feet were giving me fits. Four days out in the Indian Ocean, a monsoon started up and the Capricorn just busted to pieces on the reefs. I don't know how long I floated around hanging onto some wood till they hauled me into a lifeboat. All right now, easy with her. Uh, gently, gently. Do not bruise her on the side. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Clear off that canvas, Lua. Set her down. Oh. Uh, I'm all right. Certainly you are. There. Here, throw this jacket around you. I'm okay. No kidding. The jacket. Thanks. And clamp your legs under the seat. Everyone all right? Everything all right here, Mr. Mike. Okay. We're just going to have to ride her out. You all right? Sure. You're not sick anymore? All done. Kind of silly, wasn't it? Like a kid. No, not so silly. Uh, may I uh, do something for you, my dear? No, thanks. I'm really okay. Uh, Keatman. Henry Van Keatman's my name. It was my cargo of porcelain on the ship. I'm uh, Mark Bowman. Cora Moore. Hello. Uh, this is Lou Waugh, or is it Waugh Lou? My name is Lou Waugh. Uh, Chinese, part of the crew. Well, some predicaments, huh? Others all drown, I suppose. Or adrift, like us? No drown, I think. We were the lucky ones. Some are, some aren't. Well, spirits up, everybody. Look, we have water for a few days, so that is fine. Sure. Well, people do not get lost at sea these days, not with airplanes and so much ocean travel. All right. We'll set up watches and take turns trying to catch fish. Fish? Uh, who can think of food now? There's always later. You take the first watch, Keatman. Lou and I will... Put... Are you setting yourself up as Captain Mike? 
I hadn't thought of it that way. I want to be captain. I have always wanted to run a ship. Well, I don't care who's captain, but someone's got to watch and someone's got to fish. Very well. We all got jobs to do. Well, Lawu, you fish. Sure, I... Mike will watch. I shall tend to the water, portion out the proper amounts and go to my dear. You shall sit there and, uh, and be womanly. The water sits in the middle so everyone can see it. Cora helps out like everyone else. Well, sure, Mike. Just tell me what you want. Settle, Mr. Keatman. Settle, Captain Borman. I got a long look at them. Keatman, big around the middle and chest, white, shiny face, powerful arms. Mike, middle size, not bad looking, with clear blue eyes. Kind of girl ought to have. Lua, small, good at catching fish. So there we were, three men and me in a tub, bobbing around the Indian Ocean, drifting. Then on the afternoon of the second day... Oh, look at it! Look at you see! You ah. see! A ship! Coming right for us, Mike. Look at it. I told you, I told you we'd be found. Hello! Hello! Save your breath. It's miles old. Oh, we rode to it. The oars. Walu, the oars. Mike, the oars. Quick, come on. It was dusk by the time we got aboard. She was a three-masted sailing ship. All her lifeboats were gone and junk was all over her deck. Seaweed and ocean stuff, so you knew she'd been under once. An old barkentine, Mike said. A ghost ship. Her deck cabins were caved in and she stank from rot. We looked her over. Then down in the captain's quarters we saw it. First, a couple of human skeletons in a pile of junk that was once closed. Then a metal box, near the skeletons, open. And in it were bricks of greenish-yellow stuff. Mike knew right off what it was. Gold. Gold? Impossible, it cannot be. That's gold, all right. I've seen gold before. Well, sure it is. God, God, it is. Feel it. Hold on. Twenty, thirty pounds of brick. Why, that's a fortune. No kidding? How much? I don't know, but a fortune easily a great amount. Easily. Shut the box, Keatman. The salvage laws, it's ours. If we bring it in. We will. We've got another problem, Ferris. But I tell you, you do not get lost at sea these days. This is 1953. You do not get lost at sea in 1953. No. Shut the box. It won't swim off. What? Shut it! Who are you to tell me what to oh, do? Oh, stop it, you two. Squabble, squabble like a couple of chorus girls. Oh, uh, sorry. I apologize. All right. Now let's check the galley. We ought to figure out a way to start a fire. Oh, what about the, the skeletons? Well, what about them? Well, you should get them overboard. I do not like to share the ship with them. You do what you want. You, you throw them overboard, Mike. I wouldn't care to touch them. Well, other things come first. Uh, that is right. And, and, and before we do anything, don't you think we should have an understanding? About what? The gold. What's there to understand? There are four of us. We bring it in, it's split four ways. Four ways, yeah. Then I have a right. Now you go to the galley, Mike. I will stay here. I want to count the gold. All right. Come on, Cora. No, I'll stay down here if you don't mind. I'd like to know how much there is, too. Honest to Pete, I don't know why I said it. I wasn't thinking it. It just came out. Well, it rained that night, and we collected a lot of clean, fresh water. The next day, it was real sunny and warm. We cleaned the ship up a bit. All of a sudden, I got to feeling how funny things were. Adrift at sea on a ghost ship. But we had food, water, sun. At times, it was almost like a pleasure cruise. Good morning. Morning. Sleep well? Not too good. Of course, the place you fixed up for me was real nice, but... Well, I kept thinking about things. Cora Moore from San Diego with a jackpot. You know, you don't seem too happy about it. Uh, first problems first. We'll get found. Keatman's right. 
You don't get lost at sea these days. Ship is bound to cross us. Isn't it? Sure. So then we'll all be rich and happy. You still don't feel good about it. I, uh, I remember once when I was a kid. I reached for a pot in a dice game. My winning was fair. I got the back of my hand ripped open with a knife. I never got the winnings. I see. Counting your chickens. That's it. Oh, everybody does that. Look at me. I was going to be a ballet dancer. I was a ballet dancer. In my mind, I mean. Pirouettes and all that. Who knew I was going to end up a fan dancer? <laughs> well, that's not so bad. No? Oh, well. What are you going to do with your share of the gold? I mean, if we bring it in. Go back to Australia, get a ranch, sheep. Sounds like work. You won't have to work. You'll have enough. I don't mind. Good morning. Morning. Hi. Fine this morning. Where's Walu? Lou Wa is making breakfast. Ah, this morning I would like fish for breakfast. Have him make fish. <laughs> I feel good. I slept well. I always knew the rich slept well, no matter what they tried to tell you. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see the skeletons are gone, Mike. Oh, I tossed them overside last night. Oh, thank you, Mike. Lou Wa found a barrel of nails. We're going to board up some cabin holes after we eat. You'll help? Certainly. I'll see you later, Cora. <laughs> Surly fellow. Well, you look lovely this morning, my dear. A fresh look. The sea air, yeah. You are a beautiful girl. Sure. I'll get better looking to you the longer we're at sea. <laughs> hey, Cora, my dear, I've been doing some calculations in regard to our wealth. If the bars weigh 20 pounds apiece, and since there are 100 of them, we have 20 by 12 by 100 by 35, the value of gold per ounce. In dollars, 840,000. Hmm. Buy a lot of meat and potatoes. Ah, filet mignon, pheasant, pompano, amandine. What's that? Uh, something very delicious. Now... Suppose the bar weighs 25 pounds. One million dollars. A million bucks? If the gold is sold at Macau, where the market is free, say, $50 an ounce, one million five hundred thousand. Oh, it keeps getting bigger. Matter of multiplication. Multiplication is a wonderful thing. It makes everything grow. Uh-huh. Division, however, is not so wonderful. What do you mean? Well, take a large, satisfactory number and divide, say, by four. What are you left with? A small, unsatisfactory number. Do you follow me? No. <laughs> Mull it to yourself, my dear. I, I'm sure it will come to you. Sure, I knew what he was getting at, but I wasn't letting on. Sometimes it pays to play dumb. Well, the day went on as usual, our ship drifting and us not seeing anything but the water and sky. And then that night, laying in my bunk, suddenly began to think of something. I don't know why, but there I was all of a sudden thinking about Keatman. And those ideas of his on multiplication and division. <laughs> it just jolted me out of my bed. I ran out on deck. Mike came from one way, Keatman from the other, and we met at the railing. Lua! Lua, where are you? No need to shout more. Look. A few feet from us, the railing was all ripped away. We knew right off. Lua was overboard. We could see the fin of a great shark cut the dark water and disappear. We will return to escape in just a moment, but first... You should not have leaned against the railing. The wood is rotten. What makes you think he leaned? The ship's tossing, then. It, it threw him against the side. Lou Wah was a sailor. It's a calm sea. He could keep his feet in this ocean. I don't understand you, Mike. How else could they have gone overboard? 
There are ways. I can't imagine. Look, do we have to stand around talking about it? Oh, of course not, my dear. Accidents do happen. There's no point. Kateman, you watch your step. Oh, what could you mean by that, Mike? Just watch your step, that's all. I don't know what happened to Luwa, but you just watch your step. As you say, Captain Borman. Come on, Coy. I'll walk you back to your cabin. Mike walked me back. I had my chance to do some talking, to tell him about the conversation I'd had with Keatman. I should have told Mike. I know it. But somehow the words just wouldn't come out. I don't know why. Mike left me. I asked him to, and I tried to get some sleep. No luck. I kept thinking about poor Luwa and also something else. I don't really know why I thought about it, but the fact is I did. Without me doing anything, I just got richer. Ora? Hmm? Are you asleep? May I come in? Well, I... Just for a few moments, my dear. I want to talk to you. All right. Just a sec. It's real late. Oh, just a little while. The thing is, I do not get to see you enough alone. Oh, Cora. Now, wait a minute. Oh, it's all right. Mike is asleep. He will not hear. Hands off, mister. That's all. Oh, have I made a mistake? I thought you had some feeling for me. Well, it... It's just that... Hey, you sure rush a girl. Oh, oh, I see. I'm sorry. Why don't you go now, Keatman? Oh, no, Henry. Why don't you go, Henry? I, uh, I feel kind of upset tonight. You know what I mean. Lua and everything. Yeah, yeah, all right, my dear. You're not mad? Oh, no, no. There'll be, uh, other times. Oh, yes, of course, other times. Cora... Hmm? When we are safe on land and rich, we will go someplace, you and I. Italy, perhaps, or the south of France. Cora, one million and a half divided by three is a large number. That should mean a lot to you. Yeah, I have to admit. I've been thinking about it. One million and a half divided by two should mean even more. morning, I found Mike at the ship's bow, looking out at the sea. I remember saying to myself, he looked kind of good to me. Funny how a guy can look one way to you at one time, then at another looks so very different. Oh, hello. What do you see? Ah, uh, the usual. Nothing. Oh, it's not so bad. Still got fish and water. It's only the third day. Guys were adrift during the war for weeks. They got saved. Sure. They had it worse than us. Mind if I uh, sit here with you? No, of course not. You seen Keatman? Uh Uh-uh. Below, I guess, counting. Yeah. He sure has gone off on that gold. You know, I've been thinking. About what? Those skeletons we found. You wonder who they are? Who they were? Mm-hmm. A little. You think they were part of the crew or, uh, come on later like us? Why, well, it looks to me like the whole crew abandoned ship. No, I'd say those two came on later. That's after the ship came up from the bottom. And they found the gold, huh? Just like us? Uh-huh. I wondered what happened then. Mmm. It sure smells good up here. Hmm. It's about the only place aboard you don't smell the ship's rot. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a sailor instead of a dancer. A lot of good outdoors. Ranching gets you outside, too. Yeah. Bet Australia's just loaded down with fresh air. What about sheep, huh? Now what about them? They smell? <laughs> sheep aren't so bad. Maybe I ought to use my share of the gold to buy a ranch next to yours. We could be neighbors and get together to talk about hard times. All this, I mean. Um, Cora. Hmm? Cora, I... 
I don't know. I can't quite tell whether it's because of the mess we're in or... Well, I, I suppose it might be different on land when we're safe, but... What are you trying to say, Mike? Oh, nothing. You forget it, Cora. Sure. All right. Mike. Hmm? Keatman came into my cabin last night. He did? I thought there was going to be trouble. When I let Cora... No, it's all right. The only thing is... Well, I think you better watch yourself. Uh, what do you mean? Well, it, it's what he said to me. He said him and me could split the gold in two. Yeah. I just thought I ought to tell you. Thanks. There's a knife in the galley. I don't want to suggest anything, but... Nobody's going to blame you if you move first. I don't know why I said it the way I said it. I didn't mean to say it that way. It just sort of came out. Funny how you do things sometimes. For no real reason, I mean. Well, the third day went by and we just kept drifting and drifting. Nothing to look at but ocean and sky. Then toward late afternoon, we saw something. Just a speck in the sky, but then it came closer and closer. A plane. One of those big floor-engine passenger jobs. Hey! Hey, down here! Down here! Hey! Keedman waved his shirt and screamed to beat the band. The plane saw us, dipped its wings, and then took off again. We knew it would send a ship and that we'd soon be saved. That night in the galley, we sat down for what we hoped would be our last meal on the derelict. Fish. Have some delicious fish. Thank you. I don't want any more. Cora? Uh-uh. I don't feel much like eating. Uh, water, then. Have a big drink of water. No, I don't want any. Watch out. You're spilling it. Oh, who needs it anymore? I told you we'd be found. This is 1953. The ship will come to us tomorrow, I bet. All right. And we'll celebrate tomorrow. You put the water down. We've still got tonight. Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Keatman shut up then, and a few minutes later left the galley. Then Mike went out too. That's when I noticed that the galley knife wasn't there anymore. The sea got kind of choppy that night, and I was sure restless. Wind started acting up, began to rain. It looked like a storm was building. <laughs> Then I heard the scream. I ran out along the wet deck and stood outside the hold, looking down into the blackness. I couldn't see, but I knew what it was. Mike and Keatman. And only one was going to come up. Only one. Henry. I I got the knife in him before he knew what happened. Mike. Done. We divide by two, my love, by two as it should be. I got to get into my cabin. I'm getting all wet. Oh, wait. Cora. Yeah? The ship will come to us today, to us, to you and me. The million and a half is ours. I know, Henry. South of France, or would you rather Italy? Whatever you want, Henry. Anything? Yeah. Oh, Cora. Cora, my love. Oh, oh Cora! Cora! I don't know why I did it. Honest to Pete, I wasn't thinking about it. I just did it all of a sudden. I gave him a shove, and he went right over the side. I could see him in water just for a second, his face whiter than ever and his eyes bugging out. And then he was gone. The storm lasted for days, three, four. I don't remember now. And it tossed the ship I don't know how many which ways. Then the sky cleared up. 
sun got all warm again. Been this way a couple of days now. Well, I haven't seen the rescue ship. Water's gone. Fish, too. And I'm alone. But like I say, I'm rich. I'm still good looking. Any of you can have me, me and gold. All you gotta do is come out and get me. But please, please come quick. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you The Derelict, adapted by Larry Roman from a story by Victor Schwartz and starring Charlotte Lawrence as Cora. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns as Keatman, Ben Wright as Mike, and Charlie Long as Lou Waugh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... standing guard deep in the forests of Africa while around you closing in on you are the dreaded Mau Mau who if you relax your guard will kill you so listen next week when escape brings you John Daner's terrifying story Lily and the Colonel <laughs> This coming Tuesday night, mystery fans will want to stop, listen, and thrill to Mr. and Mrs. North looking for trouble on CBS Radio. And to John Lund as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, probing the San Antonio matter. The Norths collide with homicide and come close to grief themselves. Johnny Dollar comes close to falling in love, closer still to trouble in San Antonio. Remember, they're both this coming Tuesday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. Mr. and Mrs. North, and yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Don't miss them. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, you're invited to Art Linkletter's house party every weekday on the CBS Radio Network.